Welcome to the final rubber flower of the season uh, in summer solstice celebration. Uh, my name is Cameron. I'm going to introduce our first poet, Andy Young. And this, these are just kind of um, ways to kind of get into a person's poetics and introduce them in a more personal way. I've said it in my own poems, poetry doesn't matter here. In the States, it's a hobby, a joke. The only time it's revered is when we have no other way to address turbulence. The scramble to give something meaning, like reciting The Road Not Taken at a commencement ceremony, or how a remake of Marvin Gaye's What's Going On was the song of the moment after 9-11. But generally, the public is disconnected from poetry. When was the last time it was televised? When was the last time it really made the news? The last time I can remember was the presidential inaugural poem by Amanda Gorman, and that was a year and a half ago. In an essay that Tilted House recently published, Andy Young says, poetry is one of the not only non-commodified, relatively speaking, pursuits left. So maybe that's why community within it goes well beyond line breaks and imagery. Poetry is an anti-capitalist venture. That may not be its aim, but by, but, but by not involving itself in the food chain of capitalism, it consumes and subsumes everything in its wake. Poetry is, by nature, anti-capitalist. Andy Young's work illuminates the humanity pinned under the machine. She is acerbic against global systems of war and labor exploitation, but does so with solemn, gentle lyric, like cupping a poisonous flower to the face of evil. Her work is transcultural, either by way of travel, marriage, or experience, so as not to resemble, so as to bring resemblance to the world's people, not division or difference. Her poems are set in particular circumstances, with people being mere people, whether it be in a revolution as it cranks forward after a catastrophe like Katrina, or huddling around a cow as it gives birth beneath the palms. The struggles and solace found under the powers that be are where Andy's poems live. They peek out of the rubble and squeeze your hand and take you to safety. They're poems of empathy, destruction, and connect connectivity in the ways that water is. Andy's work reminds me of, the po of poetry's potential as a tool for revolution and, bridging the, and br the bridging of otherwise separated people and how that's done in so many countries except for this one. Maybe we can learn from that to start spray painting poems on the walls of power, to use it as a weapon of destruction, empathy, and then restoration. Please join me in welcoming Andy Young. Thank you, Cameron. So um, honored and unworthy of that introduction. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for coming out. I'm really looking forward to, to hearing Fahima as well. So um, it feels like an auspicious, it's actually an auspicious return for me because I just came back from Egypt a little less than a week ago and I'm ha I've been having a hard time actually returning. I feel like my, my dreams are still there, my, my spirit's still there. Um, so poetry is definitely you know, my home, and I'm, I'm glad to be welcomed into it. So I'll start with, with a poem from Egypt. Mubasher. Mubasher means live. It was a, this is about a revolution and when it began, and watching the live stream channel. In the dark, a white-lit screen, water cannons spraying praying people on Qasr el Nil Bridge, humans shielding mummies, books, Akhenaten. Which way will the army go? Chanting pours through my husband's laptop, Salmeya, Salmeya, peaceful, peaceful, he says. The screen shows screens in Tahrir gone black, the square itself black except for the flashes. Should we mute the sound of gunshots? Ishaq 
you read, Isha, you read, what the hell does it mean? The people want, the people want, the fall of the fall of the you say, they say, the people want bread. The barrier between us and our president was broken by tear gas, says a man in the news who cannot mute, cannot shut the screen to tear gas. A fog from this distance, up close, the canisters, expired dates, made in USA, etched in metal, in Arabic, the people is singular, which does not translate. A flagless land, which we haven't found, but if you know of one, <laughs> all ears, all ears, okay. Take me to the time before we knew, when you whipped the air to keep birds from bean blooms. Swarms of crows thicken on the branch. Copters hack the night. It falls in pieces at our feet. Fire feeds on the surface of the water. No way to put it out. Nowhere for flocks to land. They circle and circle as we search the map the lines of our palms for fields of wheat that burst into flame, for a shrine on the tracks where a saint caught a bomb in his hands. This is actually a, a short little prose piece, um, kind of an experiment I've been doing with writing really short, uh, like 20 minute bursts of, of prose. And I don't know, it, it somehow it creates a space for stuff that's hard to talk about um, to, to let me like, get, it, get it out. And, and sometimes it transforms into something not so hard. And this is one of those. Um, so this is about, um, last time we went to Egypt was four years ago and I had a heat stroke. And um, that's about this, that experience, I guess. The Ibis. The mercilessness of the sun drops down into your hands, an orange you give to the poor at the mouth of your mother's grave. How you filled and filled the outstretched cloth of a boy's galavea and placed palmfuls of bread into the smaller children's hands. Night after night, you hold my head over the bucket and wipe my body with cold cloths. Tuck the kids into pockets of cool, dark sleep. The last call to prayer stitching through the muteness of evening. I wait for darkness to fall softly, finally, over the fields, on us. Mornings are beautiful, bedecked woman cousins visit in threes. They smell of sandalwood and jasmine, beaded headscarves glinting in the darkened room as they kneel beside me, kiss my hands, smile and pray. If God takes me, I know they will cry for me, but say it was God's will. Heat stroke, we will say later. I lost days. The morning my fever breaks, you come into the room, your hands full of cream. No, a handful of feathers. No, you are holding a bird. You cradle a broken-legged ibis, its leg dangling through your arms. Our son, who looks like the children of the village, strides in proudly beside you. Both of you will bind its legs, its leg, Give it water, later set it free. Now you kneel, set the bird down on its good leg. Each of you holds the tip of a wing. The ibis stands still as the statues I've seen of it, looks me dead in the eye as if it knows me. Cameron, um, you mentioned reading some the dark poems, the death poems, and kind of like giving me kind of a green light to do that. So I'm, I'm just going to read one. I have a lot of them because um, it's, it's been a couple of years, as you know. Um, but this is the first poem in what will be my next collection called The Museum of the Soon Departed. And the first section is Display of Grief. Grief during carnival season, ninth floor, New Orleans. My new talent is to stare at exactly nothing. 
hair like the lead blanket used for x-rays, blankness passing by my window like a train. There was once a boy who stopped talking. Later, he said he was in a glass box under the sea and feared moving would break the glass. I am that boy. I used to think I would die of sadness, but have learned there is no such luck. So I sit by the wormy gardenia bush as bass drum and tuba thump through the streets. Music gone as soon as it's heard, a gathering mist on the unvisited graves of St. Rock. But grief is a labor-like squeezing. The dead are not picky. You don't have to wash their graves. Across the river, bereft, they blink dumb in the bright nowhere. Stare back at us where scraps of gold moat the air over feathered heads and bright trinkets wink against the sun, a revelry that will end in ashes thrown into the Mississippi, ashes smeared on the foreheads of the devout. I could sleep for centuries when that darkness comes. And one day, we all will. Till then, I'll steep in night. Though the dipper is less a ladle than an axe, just look next time how it hacks against the heavens. A shard of trumpet pierces the darkness and all the once-bodied mothers float past, their hair in the wind like quicksilver. Okay, I'm gonna read some new things because I'm just really tired of all the old things. <laughs> so, um, these are not in any collection. But hopefully, you, they will be sometime. But these are kind of portraits, um, poetry portraits. Self portrait as Ganoderma mushrooms. The earth was spongy where the trash tree had been before we lived here. Under our feet, the white mycelium was worming through the dirt, devouring the remnants of the trunk. Reishi bodies pushed up through soil, first puffy like dough, then spreading into flat, fan-shaped shelves, some dark orange with a trim of white, shiny grand dames with arctic stoles, some red as if the earth itself grew flesh and bled for a second before hardening and going back to ground. They arranged themselves, orange drip skirt, small bundle, brown mother in a hat with a big-shouldered father, decaying ones at the edges grown through with weeds, reishi. My mother took these mushrooms in capsules to try to keep the tumor from taking over her brain. It's on her birthday that I find out what they are. <laughs> don't feel like you, you know, don't feel bored. Oh, okay. So that's so a lot of the new poems, at least the portraits, are you know, very domestic because you know we were in our houses for a long time. So uh, anyway, so kind of, kind of in the house, kind of coming back to our house. Family portrait with possum bones. Just back from evacuating this time, the fence is blown down. The fence was likely never good. This is the second time, second hurricane. The neighbor behind us already said last time, if y'all want to fix the fence, fix the fence. I've got nothing to do with it. His parcel is a triangle, isosceles St. Bernard. The man who is making our fence stops, stops digging, reaches down, sifts the dirt through his cracked fingers, turn his palm, turns his palm up, then thumbs the white bones he's found. Small jaws, the teeth still in them, a solo baby tooth, another small jaw, a large one, possums, he says. Gotta be possums. My husband and son beside me look into his hand, our heads all bowed as if at a funeral. Did the storm kill them? The fence itself? Did it fall on them? There's still dried fur stuck to the concrete. I have seen many a possum, but somehow I did not 
think of me with her. Maybe a hawk, someone says, swooped down and took the mother of the babies in her pouch, then dropped it. We passed the bones around, the half jaws, small sleds of bone in my son's palm, sharp teeth, miniature quivers. Portrait of the couple in a French Quarter apartment. Our daughter found our picture of us in a book I've never read. A souvenir from an old life, a postcard of our past, now a bookmark in a riot girl book. My chin tipped up, my arms offering a big bowl of something to whoever holds that camera. A strainer beside my head hangs against the dingy yellow wall. I'm sassy, like, you want some? Hip turned, head cocked, a stone choker around my throat. My panties a bright white beneath the white dress from the overhead light in the tiny rectangular kitchen. I might be bringing out dessert, as there you are, washing dishes, bare-chested, penny-hued in the evening light, your sweat beaded neck tilted down as you rinse a dish. Oh. And there's the small yellow oven where you cooked our wedding lamb and the lamb after Katrina for all the friends who'd returned. The oven so small we held the door shut with a school desk. Look at us. We don't know we will be a mother, a father. Don't know of the floods yet or all of the impossible mercies. In this moment, your mother is alive. My mother is alive. Roberta and Shaima are alive. Can you hear the drumming beneath the sound of sink water? Seven day candles lit in the next room where the women sway and call the spirits down. Come down, mothers, come down, my love. Just look how we made a feast with such insouciance. This is a more recent and different kind of portrait, as you'll hear. So this is a, a photo from, I'm going to do my best here, Omakdit Children's Hospital in Kiev, Ukraine, from March 2022, portrait of mother and child. Olga's head swathed in gauze, red flecks of laceration, blue shadows around her eyes, her chest bare where her infant feeds from injured breasts. Infant, she cupped her body over when the missile struck. Head shaved, husband stands, head bent at her side, his hand on her shoulder. St. Joseph in a hoodie, her Dimitro with shrapnel in the leg. Instead of a candle, we will shine the blue light of our phone screens at their feet as we scroll past. It was not the explosion, Dimitra says, that woke him, but Olga's screaming and the sound of glass shattering. He gazes down at the baby, miraculous as any child born in ruin. One of Olga's hands searches the baby's body for metal fragments. A gold heat blanket's crumpled on her lap as if she had to use her halo as a cover. She supports the baby's head with two fingers as she stares out with a concussed puzzlement. Or is it an accusation? She stares out and dares us to stare back. So about, um, I guess, Almost two months ago, I was in a car accident in Malaysian Fields. Uh, it was a really terrible experience, as you can imagine. Um, I really recommend not crossing Malaysian Fields from like Burgundy or even Royal, but especially Burgundy where you can't <laughs> see um, what's coming. So anyway, this is written in the aftermath of this. So the, the poems, I'm going to read a few more and they're all, I've never read them to anybody. so. Yikes. After the accident. 
Your body is writing its message in bruise, yellow and black scrawled across your neck. A ring of ash around the elbow, like dirt in dim light. Your bones have not finished either, and bones have their own language. Speak fracture, shatter, comminution, blue moans as it sticks the pieces back together. Shocked like a hound at the gate kept pain at bay, but it's slunk off now, sniffing its way to the next dirty feast. Only pain remains. You will live in the concussion house, plus plush with shadows, the only sounds, the ceiling fans and distant buses. You will yell out from your sleep when you try to turn, best to stare up like in the neck brace, lie still as if trying not to be found, your brain humming like a bulb against concrete. So the next couple are even more scary because I really just wrote them. But um, like I said, we were in Egypt and I, this has been a way of trying to be here and be there at the same time by writing um, about it. So uh, I wanted to share that with you. So these are two very short poems. After four years away, everyone who sees our daughter thinks she's me at first. So I try not to sit beside her, which makes the difference clearer. Her face the glow of a sun flashing up from a gold coin, mine the patina overtaking a silver plate. And this, uh, this poem is for Ramadan Higazi, who was a second cousin, first cousin. First cousin. We have a lot of cousins in Egypt. Like a lot, a lot of cousins. Um, and he passed away this year. And the, the, the body of the poem are the words that he said or translated. So Ramadan Hagazi, Upper Egypt, 1961 to 2022. So that the earth would know him right away and claim him. When I die, take off my shoes, he said. I want to feel the dirt under my feet and don't wash it off when you bury me. Here comes the Bikya man. Not sleeping in Cairo, the dust, dust over everything, chair, sheet, Skin, sweat, we are shellacked. At least the, the pre dawn prayer has not started. There's still time to sleep. But ah, there it is. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Praying is better than sleeping. But no, no, it isn't. <laughs> it is sleep I want. Dipping into sleep, steeping in that blue wash of light that becomes cobalt, the color Van Gogh, I think, said, made life worth living. The cats complain, a yell, a beat, the Harub seller clanks his castanets. Someone's music wails out from a distant window, and here comes the Bikya man, collecting broken things. Toss it down, whatever you got, blender, speaker, table. He will collect it. He will take it who knows where to turn it into who knows what that he can sell. He will come back tomorrow with different broken things on his card and bellow out for more. Big ya, big ya, big ya. Big ya, man, come back. My country is broken. I am part of it, broken. Can we pull out the wires, the crumbled bits of bridges and levee walls? Money jangle of shiny ads, blood in the soil, tears trailing and trailing sea to sea. Can we throw these onto your cart? If we break the guns into bits of plastic and steel, can we collect the shadows in the barrels and muzzles, swaddle them with silence and gently toss them down? Vicky man, will you take it to the Zabaline and help them melt it down to cast a wheelbarrow? 
stick him in. Fix what you can of that broken country and bring it back whole. Or use it to build another room in your house for the baby to sleep in. Stick him in. Do you see first what's broken or what will be whole again? Big yeah, I will be here. Big yeah, big yeah, when you come back. I'm going to end with a, a poem that I need your help with. And um, one of the things that gets me through is, is absurdity. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a balm to me. So um, this, it, I created an absurd character. Actually, I, my kids more created it when they were little. And it, it's really hard to explain where this guy came from. John Swenson. John Swenson Dynamicon is the name of this little book. And, and there's a real, this is even, OK. There's a real John Swenson, which I, of course there is, but I mean, there's a real John Swenson that lived in New Orleans that was like really known that I just didn't know about when John Swenson was created in Cairo. So over the last few years, I've learned about this real John Swenson who is a music writer and beloved by many people and recently passed away. And he got the book before he died. I hope it had no you know, bearing on that. Um, but he, and, and he, Appreciate it. I, I was very nervous once I knew he was real. I really was afraid to meet him and stuff. But anyway, he had moved away. And so that was, but anyway, so I have to acknowledge the real John Swenson and sort of pay homage to him as I read uh, John Swenson origin story. And how I need your help is when I say John Swenson, which is frequently, um, I'm going to make this gesture and I'm going to ask you to say John Swenson with me. Okay, so when I do this, you say John Swenson. So let's try it. John Swenson. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Okay. John Swenson, origin story. John Swenson was born on Muhammad Mahmoud Street, surrounded by smoke and graffiti martyrs. John Swenson has three brothers, all named John Swenson. John Swenson will lead you to the golden mummies, hidden in the desert oasis. John Swenson knows the habits of the oldest monks and the way to their original cave. John Lennon dreams of being John Swenson. John Swenson dreams of being John Swenson. John Swenson, the blibable mascus. John Swenson is a fluttery purple beta. No. John Swenson is a speckled dead fish. No, the small darting pink one, or maybe the fluttery purple beta, also dead. The best lecture ever on Mediterranean trade routes was given by John Swenson. John Swenson, chocolate milk. John Swenson, the movie. John Swenson, on night duty. John Swenson is a pickle. John Swenson is a sea salt potato chip bent in the middle. John Swenson. John Swenson, when the screens go dark, when the channels scramble, when the satellites sputter and fall from the sky. John Swenson, when the planets align with the pyramids. John Swenson, say his name three times. John Swenson, with four pillows, he takes to the pyramids in case he wants to jump. John Swenson is a woman digging small pyramids first. She piles rocks, carrying, not throwing them carefully so as not to endanger anyone. <laughs> For the other part of the operation, she uses small shells. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. One more time for Andy Young, everybody. All right, I would like to introduce our next poet. I never know these things. Is this, is this all right? Is this not all right? Is this all right? Yeah, that's great. That's good. All right. <laughs> Vipassana, translated, translated roughly as insight, is a long-developed meditation technique of observation, observing the movement and sensations of the body on a molecular level. Ideally, meditators sit in complete stillness, breathing a natural, unforced breath, and feel the atomic choreography within, sensations of pleasure and pain as they arise and pass away. This is meant to enlighten a person unto impermanence at an experiential level. A parable you might hear while studying Vipassana is one of a person watching a venomous snake slither towards their curious child. Just because the parent meditates does not constitute inactivity. 
In fact, the morals and lessons found through meditation inevitably inspire great action. Recall, if you can, Thich Quang Duc, the monk who burned himself alive in protest of the Vietnam War, or Bree Newsom Bass, who scaled, the, who scaled a flagpole in broad daylight to remove a Confederate flag. Hmm. Meditation does not imply that you don't move to save your child from the snake. It means you move with awareness and fight appropriately. Fahima, Fahima Ife's first book, Maroon Choreography, embodies this entirely. It is simultaneously studying and teaching, sitting and dancing, breathing and fighting. Through fragments and lyric, it encourages the, the acceptance of being and the refusal of being composed. Through fugitive aesthetics, it breaks predetermined form far beyond mere poetics. This notness, this not doing, this not boxing in of, is the refusal of form, category, system, name. This not doing, as in meditation, as breath. The speaker steps outside of bodily identities and sits and floats and observes themselves as something not written by the choreography of coloniality. Moving beyond, escaping. The speaker is a tender polemicist against recrudescence, the recurrence of an undesirable situation. Conditions. In the book, they contemplate the question, quote, what if the entire narrative of enslavement and settler colonialism is just echolalia? Echolalia, a word in the book among countless others I did not know, is defined as the repetition of speech by a child learning to talk or the meaningless repetition of another person's spoken words as a symptom of a psychiatric disorder. It is very telling of movement, of different types of movements, that when the susurration of white supremacy is repeated, its refusal, embodied by subversion, communion, love, resilience, education, and suitable aggression, is the strongest fight against it. Maroon Choreography is a book that is extremely aware of itself and also very aware that it is being read and being observed. As readers, we are floating between the sky and field, past and present, death and breathing, all the while sinking back into the mycelium of the earth. This book, this book asks many questions that are rarely asked and takes to the snake with such force it makes you pause, reevaluate, listen, and act. Please join me in welcoming Fahima Ife, everybody. Try to do like too many things at once, and I don't know if it'll work out. But I'm gonna try to play some music. This is not even. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah, nice. that I've been working on a new collection and so how that happens is I'm in the world can you hear me I don't know how to talk on a mic yeah. is this, okay. closer, yeah. a little closer, a little closer? Yeah. my yeah. mouth has to be like on yes. like, okay <laughs> so I'm working on a, a new collection right now and I'm in the world of that collection and the world of that collection sounds like this apparently and um, I'll read some stuff from maroon choreography but it's hard to fall back into the music of that because I'm walking around in arrhythmia and Andy asked that beautiful question of you know is there a flagless world or a flagless realm and I think arrhythmia is a flagless realm so I hope you will come there with me um, but I'll start with some stuff from Maroon Choreography this is my first time ever reading poems so I'm really really nervous and ever reading poems in front of live people Thank you. This is from Porous Aftermath. In so far as sound is air, they are poor in spirit, poor as breathing. The breeze as earth matter pollinates the wildest parts are black like breathing. Their lungs grow into something other than windpipe, cosmic flute when they dance. Vehement in bayou winter, they are a portal between here and brass ether. 
signal between spore and star matter, opaque as nothingness, lungs open, hidden as seven human echoes alive in bas du flu, lungs heaving, quiet as dense copper cortex or aerial trees they ground and leave as air fornicates and open, outrun fierce frequency, wayward as ecstatic wind moves as nothing as 1777 intimate, series of secret runs in winter, poor as human, poor as blackness. Insofar as rain is balm, is ache, is flood, is flooded, is fluid, is torment, is tempestuous, is always need, always need, sweet black mire. Precise time signature chorus cries, calcifying is not our release. Water is, want in the tide water, is midnight, ache, is drought, in need of nimbo stratus clouds and hurricane moons, all three slippery and porous. Liquid edge is grieving, grieving, summoning. At midnight, something dies. Not a single human being, but multiple gathered cereal. They live as fecund as movement, not owned, not property, not possessed dispossessed, not ownership. They deny a single existence, homeless. Someplace meteor showered, wooden loam covered black, resolving not to be a slave, to be wayward, not documented, sacred, swath. They are resolving not to be a human, they are resolving not to be a slave or be a human or saw flesh. To tongue dance, to move without form, to move ephemeral as moonlight. To tongue in open tide waters, to wake. Mother, to dream, to bend, branches low. To slump, to surrender, to offer, to worship, to dance, to lost tree line. To tongue, out mother tongue without form bone to assemblage to lost flesh, porous aftermath to agitate in bayou winter to tongue to live. On another side of sugar cane they gloss, cross narrow thonic bridge pushed outward from inside out, glisten low, slide inside tree-lined island. Insofar as mound swallows them, broken they replenish. Tendentious, earth swallowed and alienated as air or as nothing. In so far as their dearly beloved movement is shadowed, withdrawn, and out of touch. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm actually going to ask that y'all don't clap until the end because I want there to be a lot of silence, you know, sometimes. How, how is this going? Can I read more from Porous Aftermath? Okay. I'll read some more and then I'll read some. Seven androgynous twin spirit, ethno-botanical ascendance. Now there are no ways of dividing seven, no meaningless assignments, no records of names like color, like religious bifurcation financial circumstance at birth. Was your mama a slave? Did she run off at midnight? Not body, pneumatic declension, seven runners open, aimless, open as quiet saturation, fugitive as ithmic refusal, open as improvised transitions. They come together as they run, not body, energy of seven dancers measureless as air their pneumatic polychromatic dance undocumented as air a winter breeze blows a naked tree no more tree than dancer 
tranquilo. As the leaves scatter, the body leaves. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Relax now. Malleable in the flicker dream. Tranquilo, tranquilo as air. When no one runs the trees, at night they dance, move in quiet as spirit, flee the porousness of older skins as open wind. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Not bitter apparatus, not bone, not nitrogen, flesh womb, not seven, not human energy of cypress, spirits and dancers pose, not human, supple branch legs thrust open and out cypress maybe cypress naked now not human energy of live oak spirits in dancers pose branches out on the other side of sugarcane old debt is rolled they owe no time or space as cypress as mourning as the money sweetens out as human ache blue as maple grass, a cosmic rhyme, as venomous as cryptic haunt or duende wind, cosmic flower as cannabis sativa is sugar. Matter more malleable than meaning. I began to live exclusively in the realm of music. Inside a hollow tree, there were many secrets succulents that could make you invisible, transform the body into anything you wish. I was not dead, but close, lost between flesh and intimation, a coming of and into, recurrence, the transition, slanting, a granular motion inside, the chromium, slanting, recurrence, a muscular twitch inside the earth, its contractions, or peristalsis. We communicate together in a language that does not speak, but understood perfectly. We plunge into the negative ecstasy of radio, an enriching emptiness, a resonating quiet. It is not weightlessness we are in as much as channel, ephemeral connecting space, the ecstasy of communication now in obscene gesture. Our sacred grounds, was it ever, is no longer secret. We want our hidden glistening back and simultaneously it is disappearing. Our ineffable blackness. The word is free, but we are not. The spirit of the times, the spirit of death. In the upper air unseen I lie, restless as the nocturne that did imagine me. Remember, green's your color, you are spring. I do not have to die today. The trees are half air, the texture of everything airs death. There is always a sound or color or feeling in which I can arrive. The spirit of the depths, green moves through the out of trees and grows the way blue might want for green. Neptune, I could sprint there. Even though it is cold, I could sit there, breathe its lonely frequency, inhale its seductive lament. Death comes by way of fragments. The word is no longer succulent, but you are spring, you are spring, you are spring. Thank you for listening. I'm going to switch to arrhythmia, but get some water. I like this bulb. This fuchsia, there's a lot of fuchsia in arrhythmia that's kind of like hidden, but I'm trying to pull it out a little bit more. Um, oh, and the way that I think of these collections, I don't know. Um, to me, it seems like maroon choreography is like deep inside the earth. Like that's where so much of that is taking place. And arrhythmia feels like it's this astral, you know, sort of situation. And so that's why I'm like, ooh, it's like a whole different thing. But 
I don't know, my intonation might sound exactly the same when I read them, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Drop out. It is a story of choosing less from the beginning and it swirls among the astral bottoms. More than human who choose less than in adolescence. It confuses the ones on earth tethered to their property. The decision understood, not made at age seven. Then at 12, again at 14, 16, again at 22, again at 30. In attunement of the many, our group intonation as not or on or trans or anti. We make a decision to create something different and we are children when we make it. All of us children in the make we are spirit, and so we make a way of leaving it real pretty for mother in offering to soften what had softened us. Then Tim says, you have to stay in school. You have to be one good thing for mother. And how he sing like that, how he know just then is when we want to leave, to let it go. We keep sitting inside the same room and no one can admit surrender. We keep sitting inside a room and it burns as we bristle. The burning out of leaving, dropping out like the young people say. And Lucius and Lee dropped out in third grade, then made a life worth living. I like how my mouth keeps hitting this mic and then I like bounce back because I'm like, ah, oh, germs. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. All right. And I keep licking my lips. Ah, I hope I don't die when I leave. <laughs> All right, anyway, y'all. <laughs> things that we do in the dark. Then Tej says, you're gonna have to learn how to deal with it, to divide, distribute, separate, hence to share with others, bestow, dispense, and also take part in, have to do with, to divide, distribute. We are complaining when he says it. The burnished blade inside the pocket inside the corner. It is 1987 and everything is hard again. Elijah is home from Angola. It is 17 years to the day since he left us and everybody comes from all over just to see him, his arms, black wonder. When he goes in, his name is Gunny. When he comes out, Elijah the saint the transformation chamber of night, turning tricks one minute, a demon catches hold the next, then Mary Ann's neck is broke, then metal on metal and flesh again. The trick of the century is the World Bank, a credit score, a hard bank of closed doors, and since they could not go, we burn a trick, distract and conquer and Eddie says there's talent in the family, a story of bats and lines, 12 men against a wall, and we are lines again. The coins we toss, secrets bled. The Dow is the buckus currency in the world right now. And what year is it? Tej is my cat. Mm. He speaks in that <laughs> Our general banality with sex and more of it, sex and talk of it, sex and sexuality and sexism, until some among us began to differentiate it, prefix and suffix it, label it a matter of preference, genetic reconnaissance at birth, and it was it and it was not it, until some among us began to psalm, and what about doing it? And when would we do it to each other again? And it was gratuitous, the blue and white lament of it, until it moved us into ecological proximity. What was near and how loud, the flesh budding, ripening. It had always been a matter of proximity. But what it is was close to us, lewd, and it was common, consumptive, and it was money, 
extractive, and it was public. To wet the thing, a finger strums the seam of glass. Then spirit set its fills on us. We were tending, we were swirling, and we were sensing when it hit us. A porous limb, a glowing portal, Sam Rivers on repeat. The romanticism of a romanticism inside a poem. The orifice of pitch, a clutch of birds. Then our dreams became too messy. Such holiness was flame, and it was fuchsia, fuchsia, all over the place. Of no fixed address. We could not begin to make it permanent if we tried. The things we do to each other in the dark, the things we make a way of living, then Eleni says, you were building a life together one minute, then ashes the next. And it is like that, and it is not like that. We were building a life together one season, then we became timeless the next. Everybody has a way of talking about love that keeps property and time at the center, who belongs to which household number or how long the general senses. Then Marie Tati says, if we go together, then we grow together. Where do we grow when no one is looking? We have never seen our way of touching in the diffuse connectedness the way we see that other image profuse outside us, and it is always pulsing. The profusion of a meat cute, like M. Dot says. Our lover and our lover's lovers and all their lovers, all of us swarm a new blank non-love story to represent us. We are scattered all over the earth and Haruku says she comes from people who had transcended sex. We meet and meet and meet and no one wants to do it to each other. Or doing it to each other is now a new scent in common. We are always doing it to each other in the unseen, illegible and on purpose. We are always doing it to each other and out of touch. And no one belongs here more than you. The way we touch lives beyond a single home. Consent not to be a couple. We want a millennial triad, a cluster, a swarm of. And when is the last time you fell in group love? Damiana. It is bruised, the burnished litany, the bacchanalia of spring hollowed halls of libidinous breast nestled soft inside us. The baiting and trapping of everyday life, the aphrodisiac of telepathy, make you call out at every deva in passing, the quiet inquisition of orange and orange and saffron, the momentary glimmer then clear cognizance. Then there is our friend again in passing, a spore on the cusp of spore, and we did this last millennia, last dimension, last galaxy, as lion's mane in trees inside homes, the amphibious homes of southern Louisiana, when the pressure drops, the house floats up, and there is a treasure on his varicose back, and there is Alice Coltrane's harp, the harp sprouts wings and Kelly leaps the moon as harvest, the burning void, the burning truth inside our throats. We look to each other as petals, a gentle breeze, a field of strings. Okay, I have one more and it's a long one. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm gonna end on this one. Dismemberment of the social body. And it opens with a quote, so I'll read that quote. If a possibility for innovation is exhausted, if innovation is mechanically pursued in a direction that has already been tried, the direction of innovation must be changed and sought in another dimension. And that's Theodore Adorno from Aesthetic Theory.
The artist, subject, fabricator, where it wooed significator calls mutiny. With no end in sight, the experiment flows as groundless play in listening. Listen. Imagine purely as creative manipulation. No aim. Milford Graves playing mantis and arrhythmia. Not argumentation, not that blue speak in extension toward a perpetual feeling, a shot residually effusive in the anticipated groundswell of dissent to pluck from the establishment to establish nothing new. Then Fred says, a particular sensual flavor within the general percussive field the trap set makes new possibilities of the polyrhythm possible. The drum is receding, a new flowering of the ensemble. A congregation of swallows cry in more than cry. A sensation of having been washed or burst, called out, convivial. And as it wraps us, and as it spins us, constant devotion and we share it, our mutual regard and recognition, admiration and connivance, our descent into the depths, common stress and sentiment. Where would we place the stress? What point of magnitude within the sentence? It is a matter of lines, points of derivation, departure, duality. The thing that hells us is recognition. So what lay between us is constant opposition. Shared infrafracture, a wall, our silhouettes against it. What entangles us is sacrament, our dead, our obsession, a matter of constant manipulation, where we meet in the meridian, where we meet in the meridian, Shepherd of bells, martyr of sweet, prophet of wool, soldier of bees. Then Zella says, we change from moment to moment, each change a condition of the rest. And we are restless when he says it. Beside him, behind him, at the helm of the ship, in his orbit, inside a bloom on Bank Street. The thing that grips us is our flowering. The thing that blooms inside the haven with us, a field of repetition. Time and money, the harbor and trap machine, the machine of hustle and trap. The machine trap of hush is a condition of Hermes. And it is a game and a bout of were it real or were it fake and what are the limits of. A game of constant movement, restless swindle, tender caress. And it is James Harden and Brittany Griner and what the hell went wrong with the WNBA. Then one among us begins to bristle and one among us begins to burn. I'm tired of that, sorry and one among us begins to burn. You can't tell us shit about burning that shit to the ground. It is a matter of tenderness, attending of the thing that spread between us. And Z divided us into pieces, the banal ass partitions, defenses. When did we last feel our phantom dick and come through the orifice of a new spelling of our name? And what is it about lesbian pornography and licky licky and the flame was lit? And Ife says, lesbian pornography is not the same recrudescence as lesbian sex. You don't see lesbian sex, you come undone in it. If you are elected, if you are summoned, you rise and fall in it. And it is almost wraith like the climb, the collapse of it the throne brutality and rebirth of it. And it ain't got shit to do with gender or body or flesh or politics. It is energy, an ambience made of air. Synapses spark across distance and secret earth inside the breezes till the words lesbian and sex come undone. Codex 
of an underground mission and it never stops all day long. It comes, constant manipulation of an underneath and the arms, come on, sense it. We fall out as the flame licks us clean. We fall out and Faye says, I hope you getting good when we mention the cage fighting. And the thing is, we are getting good in life. The arms, it is the arms, never a matter of what social body, what name, what gender. It is a matter of pheromone and prosody, periphery and ghost, and touch it now, thistle and electricity. The thing that called us was more than human, the constant eroding of a witness, and strengthening in sound meant music, fine-tuning the instrument. A series of simple gestures sped up. Then Aquila says, Continuous orgasm, white pavement, glass popping, bristly hairs rub lavender. My tongue swallows whole all the seduction. Wet, taste me. I could have been at home between your legs. How she sing like that, how she sing like that. How she know just then is when I need to cry. It's the reciprocity of beauty that makes me doubt myself. You. It's the wetness I want, a vessel into the endless zone where no roles exist. Amen. Understand the blood comes out like this, jagged sky. If you don't believe me, no verbs will follow the suicides now. How she sing like that. How he know just then is when we need to cry. It's the felicity of fairies that make us power ourselves and find us again with no witness and what comes of it, this work, this line, this sentiment. Thank you.